Okay. Uh, thank you so much. My name is Tiffany and I'm from the University of Colorado at Denver and I'm currently in Larry Hunter's lab. Um, but I'm fortunate enough to get to do some work with Kevin Cohen as well. Uh, so in the Hunter lab, we try to apply statistical and knowledge-based methods to analyze different kinds of data, including high-throughput data as well as biomedical text. Uh, particular research activities I'm involved in are based around trying to solve problems using semantic web technology, different statistical learning techniques, and network inference. Um, in hopes of being able to integrate different kinds of data for the ultimate goal of generating uh, novel hypotheses. My primary work recently has been focused around network, so just a little background information so we're all on the same page. Um, basically, networks facilitate the reconstruction of complicated biological processes, so they're really valuable tools in the biological domain. And when used in this domain, Nodes typically represent some sort of biological component, whether it be a protein or a gene, and the edges allow us to denote some relationship between those biological components. Uh, they provide, in general, a method for integrating disparate data sources, and inference over the structure of a network tells us some sort of information about functional elements within the network. So I think the most Basic example um, is a gene expression network where we can predict what genes are most likely to interact with what other genes and by what mechanism they interact with each other. But we also can think of some applications for using networks and network inference in particular for generating novel hypotheses. So my most current work has really been focused around um, the web ontology language. So in general, this semantic web standard is a really rich expressive tool um, for expressing relationships between different entities, and so it's very valuable for biological modeling. Um, and it enables all kinds of automatic deductive reasoning, but this also comes at a cost. So allographs themselves are very complex. Uh, they require lots of intermediary nodes, and they're very difficult, or OWL in general is very difficult to learn. Um, and the readily available reasoners for OWL only do deductive logic. Um, and as we know, not everything in biology uh, do we know the truth about it? Um, so we've developed a method which we call OWL Nets that lets us reversibly abstract OWL compliant biomedical knowledge into a representation that's both better for visualization and for inductive reasoning and inference. Um, so this is just, if you can't read it, don't worry about it. It's just meant to sort of show at a very high level what this method does. So on top is an example looking at human proteins that participate in some biological process. So this would be the way that you would model this with OWL. And what my method does is it takes um, this sort of representation where uh, the biologist may only really be interested in what we've shown in the dark nodes, so in the human proteins that participate in that process. Whereas these gray boxes here are shown are the, uh, what we're calling intermediary nodes for OWL that are needed to be able to model this kind of representation. So it takes all of those gray nodes and essentially abstracts them out and just leaves you with the biology of that query. So this is an example of what it does. This is just using a, a simple toy query that we ran that looks at drugs that interact with trimatinib and the protein targets of those interacting drugs. So in the We've shown the raw OWL representation here, and I've colored the nodes so that you can sort of see all that's being removed when we get to the, the OWL nets abstraction. So in this case, red nodes represent trimatinib, blue are the drugs that interact with trimatinib. The gray nodes, which are on top of this sort of sea urgent looking creature, are the protein targets of those drugs. And then we're calling the intermediary nodes, so the specific restrictions that you specify and the abstract classes needed to model these relationships are in, are in green. And then the, the NETS abstraction method only leaves you with the biological mechanisms. And what's really nice about it, because it's built on this OWL representation, we can have different kinds of nodes in the same network and specify different kinds of relationships on the edges as well. And we carry with us the triples used with each of these nodes so we can actually go back and forth between both representations. Um, and as I've shown on the bottom, I don't know if you can read it, in the original network when we were modeling it with OWL, we have 523 nodes and just over 900 edges. 
and the abstracted version reduces that down to 59 nodes and edges. A second example is a bit more complicated, so I haven't colored the owl version. This is sort of your stereotypical ridiculogram. You really can't get much out of this other than it looks like a giant hairball. And this query is just looking at 100,000 drug-drug interactions from drug bank and the proteins that are targeted by each of those drugs as well as the reactome pathways that those drugs participate in. So it's a bit more complicated. And I've shown on the other side here, the NETS abstraction, again, colored nodes to match, where red are the reactome pathways, blue are the drugs, and gray, which are really tiny, are the protein targets of those drugs. And so this is just really meant to show that whereas this is still a bit more complicated, you can start to see patterns and you can start to sort of see different relationships that may be interesting. Um, and we've done inference over this as well, although I've not included those slides today. So we can take these nice or nets abstractions and run different kinds of network inference over them um, that you normally wouldn't be able to do with the OWL representation. Um, so the next sort of steps and what we'd start to start, to, like to start doing um, here are sort of getting at different ways we can layer knowledge to make suggestions. Um, so here, an example is a patient has been diagnosed with muscular dystrophy, um, a disease that has a lot of different treatment options. So what do you recommend would work best for them? Can we leverage existing evidence to make better suggestions? So we can leverage open biomedical ontologies and data sources and with OWL nets put them in a form, a graphical form that we can integrate with other data. We could also mine medical records, including physician text, and try to build networks there. But we need to have a piece that lets us have some evidence to back up what we're saying, and that's where we can use PubMed annotation and some annotated PubMed articles to sort of help back up what we can say and what we can suggest. Um, and for muscular dystrophy, um, the annotated PubMed articles and PubMed annotation, there are over 13,000 articles that look at treatments specifically for muscular dystrophy. So there is a good amount to work with in terms of coverage at starting to look at this idea. Uh, a separate scenario, many drugs on the market are known to have multiple targets. Can we leverage evidence from the literature to support different suggestions for repurposing? So again, there are lots of different open biomedical ontologies like Drug Bank to Go and Uniprot that we can use to build a network to inference on, but we need to also put evidence behind that. Um, one drug that's uh, well known for its different uses is rapamycin, and in pub annotation there are 17,250 documents that discuss rapamycin. And this was a drug that was initially developed to prevent organ transplant rejection, but has since had many other different uses. So our sort of goals for BLA are to start to investigate and thinking about methods for making knowledge-based suggestions. So using evidence extracted from annotated text. Uh, so looking at the ways to extract the evidence isn't necessarily the hard part, but exploring different representations that work well for integrating with the NETS method or for doing different kinds of inductive inference um, is an interesting question, and there are many different ways to go about that and many different ways to answer it. And we have come up with three different drugs and three different diagnoses that have multiple treatment options to sort of explore that with, hopefully during this week. And that's it. Thank you very much.